If you're a driven, active person who wants to reach and pursue a higher quality life with some ambition, then guess what? This podcast is for you. This is the Driven Athlete Podcast. What's up, y'all? It's your man, Dr. Kyle. Welcome back to the Driven Athlete Podcast. I want to uh, deep dive a little bit into the squat, okay? And specifically knee pain, all right? So front, kneecap, knee pain, patellar tendonitis, those are all very common things that we find in our patients and athletic population, active people, active adults that want to exercise and do squats and lunges and all that stuff. And they have knee pain with squats, stairs, step ups, Bulgarian split squats, lunges, totally very common. So I don't want you to think you're alone with that. It's And it can be solved. It's a matter of diving and investigating what's causing the issue. Right. So as fellowship trained clinicians, what we have to investigate is what's the cause of that cause. The cause of the pain is your patellar tendon or patellofemoral pain, as in like your kneecap is uh, getting irritated and lit up um, or the tendon is getting overwhelmed and lit up totally. But what caused that in the first place? And that's what we have to intervene, investigate and ultimately uh, um, tailor our, pr- our our plan of care around to fix the problem. Otherwise, it's just going to come back. We're just resting and taking Advil and icing it and then getting back to what you're doing full go and then it comes back again. That's a roller coaster we can avoid. That's really frustrating. I've been there. But there is a solution. We have to figure out what was the cause of that problem in the first place, the underlying compensation patterns ultimately, right? Disparities in strength or recruitment of muscle recruitment, activation, or disparities in joint mobility and joint play. And dispersing the forces equally and throughout, equally as best as we can, or lack thereof causes compensation patterns. Otherwise, it's going to cause things to get lit up. And that is a target that tells us what the story, right? So as an example, knee pain with squats, all right? Something we have to really investigate is ankle mobility. All right, ankle range of motion into dorsiflexion, which is bending your ankle backwards or bending your ankle up towards the sky to ceiling. Bend your ankle backwards in that direction. Dorsiflexion is very important to allow your kneecap, your knee joint, and your shin, your tibia to advance forward without too much, putting too much shear. And a lack thereof, a person's usually what we find is active people, the way to compensate if they're lacking pure ankle dorsiflexion range of motion, causing knee pain with squats is they rotate their feet outwards into external rotation. So as they squat, they'll rotate their feet outwards, their toes point out, and they come back up and they go back to neutral. That just tells me that they're externally rotating their ankles and their shins on purpose to compensate for a lack of pure ankle dorsiflexion. All right, the other thing is they'll do is their heels will rise off the ground when they squat. If they can't keep their heels flat when they squat, and they're coming more shifting their weight anteriorly or forward on their toes or their balls of their feet, and their heels are rising as they squat at the bottom, that tells me they're lacking pre ankle dorsiflexion. All right. So imagine someone you have both. They actually rotate their toes and their heels come off as they go down and descend into a squat. That tells me they're lacking pure ankle dorsiflexion range motion. And that's a piece of the puzzle that uh, illuminates why, alludes to why they're having knee pain. Okay. So that's just something we got to think about. Another very common thing with uh, knee pain with squats is lacking posterior hip mobility. All right. So towards the glutes, right? It's not necessarily that glutes are tight. It's usually the hip capsule, the hip joint capsule. All right. So every joint, every synovial joint has a, a thin membrane called a capsule that encapsulates the joint for another layer of passive stability on the under surface of that is a membrane called your synovium that produces synovial fluid and that helps with lubrication. But that joint capsule can get stiff and with uh, repetitive movements over and over again, like squats and running and everything, um, active people and athletes are the best compensators. You can just get the job done, right? And that causes adaptations where some parts of the capsule and the hip specifically will get stiff and tight and other p- parts of the capsule get used to the mobility and gets more flexible and more... Um, uh, open, right? Um, and loose, right? So that allows the joint to f- flow and move in one certain direction more than the other, and it drives it more in the same direction. And usually anteriorly or forward is where the joint laxity and joint capsule laxity is, and posteriorly is where it's stiff. So just like water, joints take the path of least resistance, right? And it feeds more of the problem over and over again, and that ultimately leads to uh, compensation patterns with squats as an example, okay? Something that usually comes with that too is anterior hip pinching, like a hip impingement type 
uh, symptoms with the bottom of the squat. So with knee pain, it's very common that um, someone's lacking ankle dorsiflexion and also posterior hip capsule mobility. So we have to intervene by mobilizing the posterior hip capsule, all right, getting the, that joint to posteriorly roll and move backwards better to allow more freedom in the joint to move and not compensate by shifting the weight forward or the hip joint anteriorly or forward. And if you add that in with a lack of ankle dorsiflexion, oh my gosh, it's a great recipe where the ankles aren't moving well, above the knee joint, the hip is not moving well. What's the joint right in the middle that's going to take a lot of the stress and the brunt of the movement? The knee. And what's the main muscle that's going to get activated with anterior shift and a lot of front shear pressure? The quad and the patellar tendon. What's the main thing we usually hear a lot with runners and jumpers and squatters and all that stuff? Patellofemoral pain or patellar tendonitis, right? Jumper's knee. This just makes sense. The patellar tendon is the victim, not the problem. So we're not going to treat the tendon. The tendon's already lit up. It's already me- it's already jacked up. It's already sensitive and lit up. And the quad is already dominant. Usually anterior dominance makes a lot of sense too. And they can't um, recruit their glutes because their hip capsule and their hip joint can't open up enough posteriorly to allow the hips and the glutes to be accessed. So there's a lack of recruitment in the glutes. Uh, quad dominance anterior anterior shear on the knee cap and the knee joint, more pressure on the patellar tendon, and a lack of ankle dorsiflexion. That's a great recipe for knee pain. And we see that all the time. So with that being said, hey, hope you could be fixed. There is a solution and linking in these biomechanical faults and recruitment patterns, disparity, mobilities, and muscle recruitment movement patterns that we can fix. And and then wean back into um, aggressive activity and exercise again. We can't jump in right away, right? It takes a little time to work on these things, but if we can, and it takes a time to unlearn previous movement patterns, right? Sometimes it's more difficult. Actually, take it back. It's usually very difficult, more so than not, to unlearn something than it is to learn something new. The ingrained movement and recruitment, neuromuscular movement coordination patterns that's been learned and ingrained for years is going to be challenging to unlearn and retrain something new. So it takes a little time, right? expectations coming into something like this, where it's like, I want to finally fix my knee pain. I've had knee pain for several months now and it sucks, right? Or like it's limiting my mode. I can't progress like I want to and work out like I want to, right? It's a bummer. I've been there. Totally know exactly. Nobody knew what was going on. It's like, man, I wish I had this when I was in college or high school, you could figure this out, right? Because it makes sense. And we've helped a ton of people resolve their knee pain um, with ac- athletic activity. Um, and this, there is a solution, right? And as an example, the, this is a recipe that we find very common in anterior knee pain and knee issues, especially patellar tendonitis, patellofemoral pain. Um, it, this makes sense, right? So there is a solution and there is hope. We just got to intervene with the right things. And we also have to investigate each person, like why in the first place is this happening for you specifically, right? We can't uh, not... Uh, cut corners. We can't leave stones unturned. We got to check out your movement patterns, like how your squat, what it looks like, why, why you're compensating joint mobility, segmental mobility, dysfunction, core stability, glute strength activation, um, ankle dorsiflexion, soft tissue restrictions in the calf, Achilles and soleus. All those things play a role. Like that, that's part of the recipe. And that's uh, what we can investigate to really help people get back to like functioning at a high level and athletic uh, activities. Right. So um, there is hope. We just got to check it out. And then get to work, you know? So if you're in that boat, we'd love to help you. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, the best way to reach us is our email at team at athleterc.com or our phone number 561-899-8725. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to chat, help you help active people, bring hope and restore hope that you can be active and functional again versus like, just don't run anymore. Or just don't squat anymore. It's bad for your joints. It's like, it's actually been fault proven all otherwise, right? It's just a matter of not moving it in faulty movement biomechanical patterns, right? And dispersing their load appropriately and also volume and intensity, totally. Um, but there is a solution versus just icing, resting, taking Advil or anti-inflammatories, steroid injections again, surgery. Like we have to figure out why it happened in the first place and the structural problems are just the victims and result because of the ultimate compensation patterns. And that's what we need to fix, right? Anyway, so don't hesitate to reach out. Any opinions, comments, questions, concern, ideas, conflicting opinions for the podcast. I'm always open to, to having a discussion. And uh, don't hes- hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, concerns, especially knee pain with squats. And uh, we'll catch you all next time. <laughs>